it's happening. It's, it's a shark week. It's shark week, it's shark week. Shark week cap, season four. Oh, hi there. It's season four of Shark Week Cap, my Shark Week recap show. I got a new background. First show of the night, Air Jaws, ultimate breach off. So this was uh, South Africa, obviously. Um, all the Air Jaws are always in South Africa because that's where they can get up speed and go, well, and breach when they violently kill seals. So. We're in South Africa. This episode has three shark researchers. You've got Chris Fellows, who's the coolest jumpy shark man on earth. He's been doing this forever. He's like it, he's, he's, he's Mr. Shark. And then you've got Allison Towner, who I need Mattel to make me a Barbie of immediately. If you're gonna make uh, all sorts of empowering women, give me Allison Towner. She'll just look like a regular Barbie, but she'll come with cool shark stuff and I can <laughs> take her in the back. And then of course we have Enrico Gennari, who always has like eyebrow piercings and stuff and he's very fun. Uh, so the three of them are going to have a breach off where they try to get the most breaches from sharks recorded. That's what they're doing. The shark population's dwindling in South Africa and they think it's because everybody is showing up and taking their food, AKA overfishing, and also Orcas are eating their goddamn livers. Uh, so they're in Mossel Bay. I'm not, I can't do a South African accent to save my life, could not do it. So they're in Mossel Bay. <laughs> and they're hoping that maybe the pandemic has let the poor sharks chill the fuck out and like come back a little bit because everybody's been leaving them alone, which would be great if that's how this all turned out. So the way they're gonna do the competition is they're all gonna try different ways to get shark breaches. So Chris Fallows is going to do traditional Chris Fallows things. He's going to tow a camera and try to get shots and the, uh, with a with a decoy. And then Allison Towner is going to take a decoy out, but she's going to use a drone camera, which is very cool, very, very cool, and should come with the Barbie. And then Enrico is going to do um, night shark, uh, night sharking. He's gonna, he built a decoy that has like uh, lights all around it so that it sort of creates the shadow of like moonlight. Uh, and I thought I was real fucking clever and wrote down disco seal. And then that's what they called it. And I was like, no, you're ahead of me. Damn it. So Chris Fowles got sort of like a half breach right out the gate and um, has now coined my new mantra in life, which is we know we can do better. We just need to wait for the right shark. And I'm gonna be meditating on that. I'm gonna have it tattooed under my boob. Hold yourself to higher standards. Wait for the right shark. So Allison made a very like makeshift seal. She didn't do the traditional seal decoy. She made it out of like sewing together a wetsuit, which again, I appreciate. I made a lot of sock toys for kids that I know for Christmas this year. So like, I get it, use what you got. She's towing her sock puppet decoy and she's got this drone going around in circles and gets a breach that like, they're just so cool. It's just such a cool angle because it's not what we're used to. Like, I don't, <laughs> If you're as old as I am, you remember when the first time they got like a high def, like slow motion shot of a breach was like your brain exploded because you never, we haven't seen anything like that. And this kind of feels like that same kind of thing where it's like, oh my God, does technology have a non-evil use? So Allison's got a full breach, Chris has got a half breach. It's time for Enrico to go out with the disco seal. They're gonna do cocaine with sharks, do 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 do. Enrico has a hard time. He is not getting the numbers he wants. The disco seal is not working the way he wants it to. It's getting some little like pokes, but he's not getting any breaches. And he's, he's sad about it, but he's a positive guy. So he's gonna keep going. At one point somebody said something about like, oh, the males are easily identifiable by their two reproductive organs. And I'm like, they're wieners, double wiener. Say it guys, don't be shy, it's science double wieners. My two favorite things that they yelled during this episode were, come on shark, and then also rise beast, which I'm gonna start saying to myself in the morning. Motivate me to get out of bed. Rise beast. So they're doing pretty well in numbers. They're kind of getting tied and they decide that the only way to settle this is to bring in an outsider to pick the coolest breach. So they bring in human shark bait, Dickie. <sighs> Dickie, 
would, I don't think there's anything this man wouldn't do. They, and he says it too. He's like, I do the dangerous things, but like they feed him to sharks constantly. And it is a true miracle that we haven't watched him die live on television. Um, but I'm always happy to see him. So Dickie has to pick the winner and Dickie picked Chris Fallows as Breach because he got one that was like 15 feet out of the water. And he's also Mr. Shark. He's the king of the sharks. It would be weird to not pick Chris Fallows. But I really loved the aerial shots uh, that Allison Towner got. It was like, it looked at one point like the shark that she got like did a cartwheel, but it wasn't like a normal cartwheel. It was like when Muppets do a cartwheel where you clearly just like threw something in the air and it just like, <laughs> it was very cool. Very silly, but very cool. Anyway, in the end, nobody wins anything because the point of this is to raise awareness about the dwindling shark populations. So now you're aware and I'm aware. Everyone's aware. This year, I'm gonna be doing a running count of how many times people say big female, uh, in case you would like to take a drink every time they do. And somehow they made it through this whole episode without saying big female. So you're fine. Continue, continue to live casually. No need to take any action. Second show of the night was Tyson versus Jaws rumble on the reef. Now, this sort of thing is usually my least favorite part of Shark Week, but Mike Tyson is pretty entertaining. So, Mike Tyson mentioned that he has in his life battled like lions and tigers and leopards and what, when, when did he do that? In what context? So along with Mike Tyson, this episode had Paul DeGelder and Andy Casagrande. My boys are back and it's finally Shark Week. So obviously I have a crush on everyone on Shark Week. And I've been trying to like think about what that is. Like what is it about them that I'm so attracted to? And I think it's the combination of their faces, bodies, personalities, and interests. So the idea was that they're gonna like put them in a pool first to like a uh, learn techniques and they have a they called it an animatronic shark i saw the guy swimming around inside the shark this was not that's not how animatronics work you got a puppet so they're in their water with their puppet shark and like somebody that probably didn't get paid very much is swimming around inside a shark puppet and mike tyson like really did not get through that one he was like so tired in the pool with a puppet shark. And I was like, oh no, please don't make him do this. So poor sleepy Mike Tyson is like learning booping techniques to keep the sharks away from him. And they're trying to give him pep talks. So then they bring in Dr. Craig O'Connell and Andy Casagrande. So we've got science man, science man <laughs> camera man, and a uh, hot man. The plan is to put Mike Tyson in the water in the Bahamas with sharks. And what they're building up to is him being able to put a shark into tonic immobility, which is where you like give them a little sexy nose massage and they just like and just like space out in your arms. Um, so that's the goal that we're working towards that is making this poor man vomit with fear. My favorite interaction in all of this is they're sitting around chit chatting about like safety and stuff. And Andy says to Mike Tyson, like, don't worry, I'll keep you safe. And Mike Tyson is like, you're not gonna keep me safe. The, the scientist over here is gonna keep me safe. Dr. Craig O'Connell is gonna keep me safe. You're gonna film me when I fuck up. I was like, oh no, that is, that is what's gonna happen. And then they're like, okay man, rule number one with sharks is don't get bit. And without missing a beat, Mike Tyson turns to poor Paul DeGelder and says, why didn't anybody tell you that? So. I'm waving my normal celebrity outrage for tonight because Mike Tyson is very, very entertaining. He also said that like his son basically puts him in tonic immobility and then they cut to his son like using one of those head massagers on him. And I was like, yeah, this is fine. I'm fine with this. A thumbs up from, from old Shalia. I don't remember what Craig said to Mike Tyson, but he said like, cool fucking story, Craig. <laughs> I was like, this is great, great, great. Somebody finally said big female, drink. They were trying to like give him science facts to keep him distracted so he wouldn't be so stressed. But one of the facts was just about wieners again. It's always wiener talk. Men are very predictable. I know they're claspers, but it's funny. But wiener's a funnier word. Actually, claspers a pretty funny word. Jury's out. They've got Mike Tyson in a cage and he's like trying not to look. And they're like, do you wanna, do you wanna turn around and look at him? And he flat out says, no. 
it just seems like it's not gonna go well. So they put him in like full chain mail and send him down and he, they just keep kind of pushing him forward because they gotta get through this. They just gotta do it. Uh, and he does not want to be there at any moment, but he gets through it and they give him like a pokey stick and he's to like a, a little bit protect himself and he's getting a little like lungy at the sharks and they're like, no, 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 don't stop poking them. But then they get one and he like, they do, they do okay. He did, he got through it. He overcame a huge fear uh, and he got through it and no sharks got hurt or punched. Thank God, because anytime they're like, some athlete versus Jaws. I'm like, no, I just adopted a bull shark. What if they're out there punching my daughter? Big female did come up one more time. So this is a two, this is a two big female episode. So that's, we're, we're two episodes in, we're only at two big females. Seems like we're gonna have a casual night, huh? Third show of the night was Shark Lockdown. Now, you may be thinking, Shulia, why is this even a fun drinking game to drink when you hear big female? Because in Shark Lockdown, they said it an additional 17 times. So drink 17 times for big female. You're at 19 drinks for three hours. I mean, they're sips, please be sipping, not full drinks. Don't die because of me. Shark lockdown, they're in New Zealand and they're like, ooh, we've all been on lockdown because we're all gonna die from the pandemic. And um, so we're like, maybe the shark populations are like doing different stuff because there's no human noises in the water. Everybody has to stay home. Um, and so they're going out to see what, the, what everybody's up to. So like the main dude of this show was Kina Scalé and he's in New Zealand and he's just been like, I would, I would say he's been dreading his hair in lockdown, but it was already like that. I've seen him before. So Keen is in New Zealand and he's with uh, somebody whose name I forgot to write down because I'm a terrible person and because they made me drink 17 times. And uh, the prime minister's fiance, uh, which oh, he's so dreamy, good job. You know what? He's very dreamy. He wore like a little like captain's costume. He wore like a, like a Fair Isles knit sweater and a little like double-breasted uh, <laughs> pea coat and was like ready for the sea. Um, and I'm like, oh my God, New Zealand's the best. I, you can be prime minister and be marrying a shark guy. It's a perfect country. <laughs> anyway, so the PM's fiance's name is Clark. Clark in his little jackets is out there with Kina and third man. They called the one guy like as a compliment, like, ah, oh, he's a solid waterman. Solid waterman, he's an ice man. So they're specifically trying to see what a shark that they've named 747 is up to. She is a big female. Um, and they named her after, you know, an airplane. It's hard, being a woman is hard. They're talking about how the female sharks become fatter as they become sexually mature. And I'm like, oh, fine. Just leave us alone. So Kina built a cage in lockdown, like we all did. And he's out with like, it's like a little swimmy swim. It looks like a coffin. And he's out there and it, uh, one of the sharks immediately like grabs the buoyancy, uh, like bladder on the side and pops it. And so then he sinks to the bottom. So he's stuck in a cage on the bottom of the, of the sea. And he's like, got his knife trying to like dig out the, all this like, greenery stuck in his fucking cage. It's just, he's like screwed. Kina calls for help by saying, I've got a spot of bother down here. <laughs> Man, I love not America. <laughs> and so then to get out, cause the sharks are still swimming around, they won't leave him alone. So the way that they get out is like, oh, well I'll have to use my like escape, my escape pods. It's like bags on the side that are gonna fill up and, and raise them up to the top. And I'm like, oh good, then that, why didn't you just do that in the first place? It's because you have to fill them up using your oxygen. So like it has to work or you're out of oxygen. And I think there's gotta be a better solution. Someone look into it. So at this point, they've said big female so many times. My note taking on this episode has become just trying to keep up with how many times they said big female. So I'm losing a lot of the science at this point and brain cells because they just, it's just every other word. I've got a whole week ahead of me. I need you guys to slow down on big female. I know, I know you like saying it. I know, and I know it's how you tell, you're like the, the females are bigger. That's why it's impressive. I know, I know, I know, but like, huh, pace yourself. Oh, you're gonna kill me. 
Eventually they saw 747 and then they'd also seen earlier a male shark that had like a perfect circular bite um, on his side. And then she has like fresh sex scars. So they're like, oh, did they fuck? Maybe they fucks. For the most part, what I got from this episode is drunk. That's it for night one of Shark Recap, my Shark Week Recap show. Uh, please keep watching and I will also keep watching because that's how recaps work. Nom 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 nom.